cap. Bullshit Evangelist. Okay. Teachers. Hmm. Exhorters. Well, what you're going to find out today is sometimes people that are calling themselves prophets are really just prophetic exhorters. And so you're going to be able to see that today as to which one you are. I, I want to talk about something that's really important before we go into the other parts of the lesson. I want to talk about authority and power. Um, and I hope I can see it. This, this lighting is a little dim. Okay. The difference between authority and power is that authority releases power. Uh, let's look. Um, let's look at Matthew chapter number three, and let's begin reading at verse thirteen through 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? And Jesus answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, it was very important that Jesus was baptized of John. Number one, John was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was the one that cried, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And that's what prophets are to do this day. They're to cry, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And they're supposed to make the way straight for people. And so John was hesitant because I'm not sure whether he knew that responsibility or not. He just knew that he was sent before Christ came, all right? And, and uh, when Jesus said that um, suffer to be so, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What we see here is John the Baptist being authority. Jesus being power. So it took the authority to release the power. Amen. It took the, re the authority to release the power. John had the authority because he was the forerunner. And it was his job to release whatever was in Jesus. So what we see here is that authority is more important than power, okay? Power is the ability to do an act, the capable of doing or completing an act. Power always needs authority. Power always needs authority. Praise God. When you go out to minister and you go out without the release of authority, and I want y'all to look at me when I say this, you go out without release of the authority, you are in error. Absolutely. You are in error. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care how many demons you cast out, how many people you get uh, healed. You are in error. For <coughs> power, uh, for authority, must always release power. How many of you understand me that? Amen. That is so very, very important. Sorry. Okay. The other thing is, power submits to authority. Now watch this. Jesus told John, I have need to be baptized. You, John said, no, 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 no. You 
got to baptize me. <clears throat> Jesus said, no, you got to baptize me so we can fulfill all righteousness, mm -hmm. so that we can have order. It was not that Jesus could not do what he wanted to do, but he had to follow the divine plans of the Father, purpose of the Father. He had to have proper introduction. He had to have proper release as an example to us that before we go out, we must have proper release. And if you have went out and you have not had proper release, you need to submit to somebody. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I was, in, I was out of state at this huge uh, co convocation and I was the main speaker for that night and all of these bishops and apostles and all that was on the platform, all on the platform in back of me. And I had to preach a message since, uh, similar to this to let them know it doesn't matter how good you are, how many people uh, 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 you've gone through to have laid hands on you and all that kind of stuff. If you are not properly released and introduced, you are a bootlegger. Right. Mm. Mercy, You're Lord. Mm. You're illegal. That's right. I don't care how much you holler and scream, heaven knows that you're illegal. Earth may not know it, but heaven knows it. Well, praise God. So power always submits to authority. Heaven opens up access to everything in heaven. So if you don't go by uh, the design plans or the kingdom principles, then heaven is not accessible to you. Yeah. Heaven is not opened up to you. I don't care how what you feel. There's a time you can feel in the spiritual atmosphere that heaven is like iron. Mm -hmm. Feels like iron. You you can't penetrate. You can never penetrate when things are out of order. That's right. Never. Yeah. I don't care about your good feeling. Your feelings are very deceptive. Well, praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. God introduces and promotes us when we are <clears throat> under authority. You have to be under authority. Amen. When you are authority, under authority, you don't have to announce yourself. You don't have to say, I'm Dr. Doolittle or uh, I'm, I'm prophet this or prophet that. Heaven will introduce Amen. You. I never go anywhere passing out cards. I never come into a town introducing myself. As a matter of fact, I get very irritated when they read the, read the bio. I was very irritated at you that they're reading all that stuff. I, I know you meant well, but people do that to me, and I don't like it. Because whatever I have is to the glory of God. When I was in another country, they wanted to see more behind my name than reverend. So I went to school to get those degrees for that purpose. None of them are hanging on the wall because they were not for me. Are you hearing that? Yeah. All the glory and honor goes to God. Amen. Yeah. That's who we're promoted in this earth. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And so when you're under authority, you never have to introduce yourself. When you're under authority, you never have to pass out cards. Because heaven introduces heaven. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Heaven introduces heaven. Heaven knows its own. But when you're out there on your own and say, well, you know, I know that God called me and I know that God gave me this and I know that, no, no, no. You're already in rebellion. There was a Presbyterian pastor years ago that said, um, he, he did a tape on rebellion and he gave me permission to give it out so I gave it out to pastors in years back so they could recognize rebellion but he said he didn't know he was in rebellion until the Lord showed him when you said if I was the pastor this is what I would do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That is the first step to rebellion. Mm. Mm. Right. First step to rebellion. Mm. Huh? And that happens many times when people refuse to submit to authority. Now, I realize that there is cruel authority. And some people take unfair advantage and they, they control the people like like one prophet at home, he taught the people at Christmas time, you don't have Christmas tree. Well, my friend and I, we always had Christmas trees. So she took her Christmas tree and gave it away or threw it away or something, okay? I kept mine. I said, I'm not worshiping the tree. My lights represent who was born. And on the top of my tree is a star or an angel. Well, didn't he a few years later come back and tell them it was all right to have the Christmas tree? Come on, you can't let anybody control you like that. You cannot allow that. You cannot allow that. You cannot allow that. Nobody has a right to dictate or control. There's a difference between controlling and having authority. Authority gives authority gives authority gives directions. Authority gives directions. People that control you put you into bondage. Are you understanding that? Okay, so you don't need any, you don't need anybody to introduce you. Let's look at. Um, I want us to go to Saint Matthew, chapter number seventeen. Now remember, this time the Lord has said, "This is my beloved Son; I'm well pleased." You know, He's here to serve my purpose. He's here to do. I don't think this is on. He's here. He's here to do uh, what he said to do. Okay, let's look at Matthew uh, 17. And um, we are going to begin reading. We're going to begin reading, thank you, at verse number one. And we're going to read down to verse six. And after six days, Jesus take and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thy wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now watch this. In the first chapter, in chapter 3, he just says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Why? <clears throat> because he was obedient to, to the baptism. Okay? Now, he says, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. What, what is the difference? At this point, heaven is introducing Jesus and his ministry. Are you seeing that? Yes. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. Praise God. Amen. And so, Jesus, when he came, he submitted to someone that was greater than he. He submitted to John, who was the forerunner and had the authority. He had the authority to release the power in Jesus. And then what did John say? I must decrease so that he may increase. So not only did he release the power, the authority was released in Jesus. And what you see 
we're going to read some scriptures to show that um, Jesus was attacked because of the authority. Get St. John 21, and I believe that's verse 23. Okay, St. John. Now, I want you, hope you all brought your Bibles so that you can look at the scriptures. It is so very important. St. John. I got. I got to make sure. The, I got to make sure. Okay. Of the verse. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to read. Um, okay. I want you to read verse uh, twenty-three. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Now Jesus is speaking in, in authority. Mm -hmm. What difference does it make to you mm -hmm. if I said that? <laughs> <laughs> What difference does it make to you if I said that? It wasn't to you. It wasn't for you. See, authority knows how to speak with authority. So Jesus, the power was not only released in Jesus, but his authority for earth was released. Praise God. Um, so let's look at Matthew chapter number 16, verse 13 to 20. Now I got to make sure because sometimes I can't read my own writing. Matthew, um, okay, just a minute. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter number 16, and we're going to read verse 13 to 20. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Now watch this. Jesus now has power and authority. And now he approaches his disciples. They were not yet apostles. They were still student followers. They were not even born again yet. And so he says, that, who do people tell you that I am? Or who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. So they said what everybody else said. But he kept digging because there was a certain answer that he wanted. Mm -hmm. And isn't it amazing, the only person that could answer that was that Peter who had lied, cut off somebody's ear, had a foul temper, told Jesus what he's not going to do. Mm -hmm. He was the one that received the revelation. Why? 
because Jesus had already said to him what the enemy desires to do. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But I've already prayed Pray for, for you. you. That when you are converted, Amen. you strengthen the brethren. Mm -hmm. So conversion means an absolute mind change. Amen. An absolute mind change. Okay? And so now, Peter has the answer. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did reveal it to you. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Holy Spirit gives you power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Amen. Holy Spirit gave them power. Mm. Jesus gave them authority. Yeah. Holy Spirit will give you power. Mm -hmm. But the person that you're submitted to will give you authority. Amen. Amen. Huh? Right. That's right. And we see that. Mm. Keys represent authority. Yes. <laughs> he didn't say, I give you the keys to the kingdom. That would have meant something entirely different. But he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. You got authority in the kingdom. Yes. Come on. Certain things will happen. Yes. Because I've given you that authority. Yes. And we see him operating in that authority on the day of Pentecost. You know, when there was a, a, there was a great party outside because it was a legal Jewish holiday. It was, it was the Pentecost holiday. But so much was going on in the inside that it attracted the people on the outside that they quit their party and came on the inside. Mm -hmm. And they said, these must be drunk. Mm -hmm. And here's Peter now. He's got some boldness now. He's gotten full of the Holy Ghost. He's got some power. And he's got some boldness, and he's standing, and he's talking to the Sanhedrin court. He's talking to those people that crucified Jesus. And he calls them by name, ye men of Israel, which included the Sanhedrin court. The Sanhedrin court and all those priests that were in agreement. And he goes on to tell them of what they had done, who they had done it to. Why? Because he has authority. Amen. Oh, my God. Mm. He has authority. Now, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Mm. Don't sit in the back. I see you. <laughs> I, I don't know whether this chair is cut or not. Pastor Manano and his wife. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Now, now watch what happened. Everybody look at me now. He used that authority to preach with such conviction that it caused them to be convicted, not condemned. Holy Spirit never condemns. He always convicts. Amen. And they said, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to change this thing? And Peter said to them, Repent. Mm -hmm. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Right. Amen. Yeah? So somebody took that as a denominational principle. Mm -hmm. Somebody took that as a baptismal formula. Mm -hmm. And he was not even talking to us. He was talking to the people that crucified Jesus. What, what was he saying? That that name... You got to be totally submerged into the name of that person that you crucified. Amen. Totally submerged in the entire doctrine of the man you had crucified. Wow, praise God. So when we use that formula and it's not for us, huh? we're agreeing, I helped kill Jesus. My God. Wow. Come on. See, we got to learn to become students of God's word and, Amen. and take things seriously. Amen. He was talking to people who had killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. Did you kill him? Mm -hmm. Then why would you use something that's not yours? Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, we get so used to doing stuff, it's hard for us to quit. So this is, 
We've been doing this all our life. We was raised in this. That's what they all, so what? They were incorrect. Mm -hmm. And they did what they thought. And there was a time when God winked at ignorancy and he's not winking anymore. Right. You have to choose his truth. Amen. Reject his truth. Mm. Well, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. So authority um, helps you with the task and responsibilities. Power gives you the ability to do what you're supposed to do. Authority releases the power in you to do what you're supposed to do. If you don't have proper authority, then you can never be authority. Absolutely. Never. Because in order to be authority, you must be submitted to authority. Absolutely. And I'm not talking about these jack legs walking around here talking about their Bishop Doolittle and Prophet Doolittle and all that, and they want to rule over a group of people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who operate all the way in the divine authority of the kingdom of God, who know how to lead, guide, direct, and protect God's people. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. And so I had to stand there and tell all these people this. They were already who they said they were. And I had to tell them because you're not submitted to proper authority, you're a bootlegger. You're not legal. Time is out for playing. Amen. Time is out for trying to tell God what he can do and what you're not going to do. And if you're not going to obey him, set your behind down and quit trying to teach somebody else. Amen. Simple as that. Just simple as that. Amen. Huh? Amen. Keys are laws and precepts. They give you access. They give you access uh, to power and authority. Now, let's look at something. Let's look at Moses. Moses is called as a prophet to the backside of the mountain. So this is how it happened with him. He went into seclusion. That was his secluded place to hear from God. All right? He was called by God, and he uses excuses not to do what God says. I'm slow of speech. I don't talk well. You can read that in Leviticus 3 and 2, 4 and 17. But there came a time when he had to say yes because God said the cries of my people have come up to me mm -hmm. and I have chosen you. Well, he didn't realize that the process of his birth and being hidden was the door for what he was to become as the leader of the children of Israel. Right. Oh, wow. See, you don't know what your process is doing for you. Wow. I, I told somebody not long ago, your child that has the greatest assignment in the earth, that has the greatest anointing in the earth, that's the one Satan tries to kill. Wow. That one right there. My mother told me that when I was a child, maybe about two or, two or three years old, my father used to work for the railroad, so we, we were out of state, and this woman had some hot boiling water that she was about to put on me. And my mother pushed me out the way, and she got it all on her legs. And when she pulled her stockings down, all that flesh came off. Mm. Ever since I was a child, mm. Satan has tried to destroy me. Yes. It didn't mean that my brother and sister were not anointed, mm. but I had the greatest responsibility. Yes. So quit asking God, why you? Start asking God, what is the purpose? Amen. Seek an answer to purpose. Yes, 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 yes. Seek an answer to Amen. purpose. Amen. 
your pain will become somebody else's gain. Mm -hmm. After that, you have suffered a while. So true. Yes. Amen. So true. So now here's Moses. His first call is as a prophet. God's talking to him. God's telling him what I want you to say. He said, I can't say it. So God gives him a mouthpiece. He gives him his brother Aaron as his mouthpiece. Now Aaron becomes the prophet. Moses becomes the apostle. My God. He leads the people out. My God. Are you my, following this? My God. God gave the prophet the voice. Even now, true prophets are the voice of God in the earth. True prophets. Not these prophets that give all these darn personal prophecies about you got to get this big car, you got to get this house. You're going to die and leave that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Very true. true prophets always lead you to God. Yes. Always. And so we see what happens. Moses was first called as a prophet because you're going to use, I'm going to give you a voice. Moses complained, I'm slow of speech. So Moses says, I'll, so God said, I'll raise up your brother and your brother will be your mouth. And he said, this is what he says. You will be unto Pharaoh, God, in my stead. Mm -hmm. My God. That's what he says to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. That's what he says to Moses. Mm -hmm. You will be unto Pharaoh, God, mm -hmm. in my stead. Yes. Amen. And that's why we tell apostles, apostles stand as God in the earth. It's not just about you got some title or something, yes. but you stand as God in the earth. Your mouth has authority. Amen. Your mouth has authority. Your mouth has authority to bring order where there's chaos. Right. Remember, Jesus did not operate in the authority and did not operate in the power until John the Baptist, the authority, released the power in him which released the authority in him. Right. And so he was persecuted, not because of the power that he operated in, but the authority that he spoke in. Mm -hmm. The authority. Mm -hmm. Are you all following this? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. And so now we see Moses. Now he's walking in, uh, as he's going before Pharaoh in the stead of God. And he tells Pharaoh, you know, let my people go. That's what, that's what his brother is saying as the prophet. Let my people go. And then Pharaoh lies and decides to let him go. Then he changes his mind and all this kind of stuff. But when he finally, after he got tired of all those plagues, I believe there were nine of them, which represented each one of the Egyptian gods. It was their gods that was coming against them. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That God released their own gods against them? Huh? <laughs> their own gods. Praise God. And now here, Pharaoh, his son has died. Okay, you guys go. Get the heck out of here quickly. Now, here's Moses is given the order for what the children of Israel to do, how they're pre to prepare. You know, uh, he, he says that the, the father is to uh, slay the animal and let the blood drip down into this container at the bottom of the, of the door, okay? Then they take a, a, a thing and they put the blood around the door to seal them in. Amazingly, that lamb is killed the same way they cut Jesus. Down to the third rib to make the heart palpitate to drain all the blood. 
That's what they did to Jesus. But they didn't realize he was already dead. They stuck the spear right under his third rib near the heart. That's how the father killed the lamb. Third rib under the heart. And there's a whole story about that blood. So now they're sealed in. They're sealed in. I hope nobody was foolish enough to open the door. <laughs> they're, they're sealed in. And now it's time to go. He told them what to take. And not only that. They did not leave Israel poor. They took the riches with them. Yes. Huh? Not only did their gods turn against them, but the Israelites were able to take the money. Now, here they go. Moses is marching with over a million people, literally a million. And they're getting ready to get to the Red Sea. Now they begin to panic. What are we going to do? Moses raises his rod. The sea parts. And they walk across on dry land. What did that represent? It represented that they were baptized into the authority and leadership of Moses. Wow. Huh? That's what it represented. It wasn't just a story about they crossed the world, dry land, the waters parted. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Moses showed that he had authority. I don't care who you say you are, how much apostle, prophet, pastor you say you are. If you don't operate in that given authority, you're not going to change nothing. Absolutely. You're still just going to have church mm -hmm. with the singing and the screaming and the hollering and the shouting and the speaking in tongues. But nothing changes up here. Yes. This is where it's got to change. Yes. Up here, mm -hmm. praise God, mm -hmm. so you can see it down here. Mm -hmm. That's the authority. For you can tell the devil what he, he cannot do. My son was, had been on drugs. He was out in California. He's a, a college grad with, with these degrees and all that stuff, and, and, but got himself involved in that. So he was out in California. And, and one day somebody called and said, he's missing. He turned his keys in, and nobody knows where he is. And, and, and uh, they felt that he was going to commit suicide. And so my instinct as a mother I need to get on a plane, go see about my son. But God said to me, prayer has no distance. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I began to call him by name. And I said, you shall live and not die. I bound death in every way it would present itself. Huh? I prayed for a laborer because God said, you said, pray for laborers, that a laborer would find him. About an hour or so later, somebody called, said, we found him. He's okay. When he came home, you know what he said? He said, Mom, I heard you call my name. 2,000 miles away. Praise God. We're talking about authority. Amen. We're, talking, we're not just talking about laying hands on somebody so they can fall out. Most of the time, people will themselves out. They don't want you touching them. That's like, ah. Come on, get him up. Get him up. He said, I heard you call my name. That's called authority. Are you understanding this? You've got to learn what authority means and make sure that you are properly released. Amen. Properly released. Okay? So we see Moses. A very good example of what that apostle should do. We see Jesus, a very good example of what that apostle should do. Jesus is a 
uh, called uh, the chief apostle. And what did he do? He trained the 12 and he released the 12. Now this is how that worked. Remember, uh, if any of you are in, in a nurse or anything, you know that you go through a clinical period where you have to exercise what you've learned in the books, okay? So I believe what Jesus did when he told them, okay, I'm sending you out, but only go to the household of Israel, heal the sick, raise the dead, don't go to Samaria, don't go anywhere outside of that. That was their practice session to see if they really were going to operate in the power that was going to be released to them. Are you hearing that? Yes. And so they came back. They were excited. Even demons are subject to us. He said, don't be excited about that. You'd be excited because your name was written in the Lamb's Come Book on. of Life. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yes. Yes. huh? Amen. And then after they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he said in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. So let's see what's done. Those of you that are in leadership, you shall receive power. That word power is the word dunamis. D-U-N-A-M-I-S. It means supernatural explosive ability. And within that word dunamis is the word dunamis, which means signs, wonders, and miracles. Praise God. Huh? Amen. And he said, and then you shall be witness. What does the word witness mean? It means mortar. It means that you got power to die. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. You got supernatural power to die. The apostleship and prophet, those are deadly callings. That's right. Deadly calling. And so, if you don't have authority, then you're going to get beat up. You're going to get beat up. Another thing happened. The same son, I was out of town this time. They called and said he'd gotten beat up. He was in the hospital, the coma. And of course, again, I wanted to go, but I couldn't go. And so somebody called, so we're watching over him. And, and so um, God has shown me him getting beat up even before it happened. Mm -hmm. But God hadn't shown me the extent of it. They beat him up and they put him in a garbage bag and they threw him in the street. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around and dumped him out of the garbage bag. They don't know why they did it. But I know why they did it. Because Satan didn't have the authority to kill him. He could beat him up. He was on his territory. But he didn't have the authority to kill him. Are you understanding this? you got to understand authority and quit whining about what's going on in your country. Quit whining about it. And rise up and do something. Start taking authority, and all you churches quit being separated. A little group here, a little group there. Little, that's that's right. in America, too. Nobody wants to come together because who's going to be in charge? Who's going to get the glory? Well, God should be getting the glory. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we keep having this stuff because Satan has opportunity. Division is opportunity. Ignorancy to the word of God is opportunity. So why can't we come together? Or the pastor will come and get what he needs, but won't let the parishioners come and get it. Why? That's an opportunity to control. One pastor told me he didn't want to be in the same class with his parishioners. Why not? Why wouldn't you want to? So now we've had a good look. We've had the good look at the steps. All right? John the Baptist, the authority that released 
the power in Jesus, which also released authority in Jesus. Okay? Jesus, introduced by his father in Matthew 17, Jesus' ministry was introduced. He says, hear ye him. That was the introduction of his ministry. Heaven introduces heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need a card. Mm -hmm. You don't need a card. You don't need a cell phone with your number. Here, take my number. You can call me anytime. I do conferences. Mercy, I do workshops. Lord. I do this. Shut up. You're insecure thinking nobody's ever going to call you. When you do that, that's what you're saying. We don't do things like the world. The world puts out business cards. We don't do that. If someone asks you, uh, uh, I'd like to have you sometime. Uh, do you have some way I can reach you? That's good. But just to go up to somebody with a, an advertisement, well, I do workshops. <laughs> <laughs> I do conferences. I do women's. So what? How good is it? What's the effect of it? When you have to advertise it and nobody advertise you. Do you know what happened ever since I've been here? Somebody has said to me, I remember when you were here 25 years ago. Somebody even mentioned 30 years. I said, how am I supposed to remember 30 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody told somebody that told somebody that told somebody. Yes. Huh? Hello. Not me. Did you guys ever hear me advertise myself? Mm -hmm. No. Uh. I didn't. Because if it's the will of God, yes. he does it. Yes. I told you didn't. Don't worry, right? God has the people he goes in. Absolutely. Because huh? heaven advertises yes. heaven. Yes. Praise God. But we assimilate with the world. Whatever the world does, we do. Yes. Whatever they do. The world's are, uh, you, you got the, they got the business card holder now. You know, you get a nice little leather one, you know, that you put down in your purse and stuff. And you put all your cards and you look at this, oh no, I'm just down to a couple of cards right now. Wonder if somebody wants to, oh, forget the whole thing. <laughs> Throw God. the whole thing away. Absolutely. <laughs> if God doesn't advertise you, you're not worth being advertised. Mm. My God. Simple as that. Simple as that. Simple as that. We operate in kingdom principles. We are kingdom people. But everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. We have operate so in such a low dimension in this church dimension this system of the church mm -hmm. that everything we do is church 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 our programs our plans Mighty our God. soul winning yes. uh, our fundraisers mm -hmm. our women's day our men's day our, our, our. where is God in all of it where is he in all of it well so what God told me if he told you what was the reason there must be somebody that's faint at heart that needs some special attention, not just to have a program for the sake of bringing people together. I don't want people just bringing people together. That's right. I don't want that. I don't like that. Wherever I go, I expect something supernatural to happen. I declare it. I have my team declaring it in the morning. They get up every morning at 6 o'clock, drag it into my room, like they can't see, but when they but when they start praying, they suddenly are wide awake. Because we're declaring what's gonna happen. Amen. You don't just want a meeting. You ought to get sick and tired of just having meetings. Come on. You ought to be sick of that. 
the world does not want it. The world does not like your church. I hear them say it. I don't like church. And I say, guess what? I don't either. <laughs> Amen. And they said, what? I said, you're talking about the system. And the system says, every Sunday we come in, we're going to have prayer. Somebody hollers at God. We're going to have <laughs> praise and worship, three fast songs, two slow ones. Uh huh. Then we're going to have, um, God forbid that God decides to move. So we have to stop him because it's offering time nice. and it's time for our announcement. Mighty God. And if we get through with our offering and our announcements, okay, God, you can come back now. Help us, Lord. And then the, the preacher gives you a message that's going to hype you up, make you feel good. And all that, you're going to scream and holler. And say, ooh, pastor, preacher, what do you preach about? I really don't know, but it was good. <laughs> no, the world doesn't like that. The world doesn't want that. That's why they go to cults, and you are responsible. That's why they go to cults, because they expect something supernatural from you, and they don't get it. And they go to the cults who operate in the supernatural, even though it's demonic, and they don't know the difference, and you're still on the inside shouting and singing and snotting and all that kind of stuff where they get involved. You are responsible. Mm -hmm. You're responsible. Apostle, the Lord, told, my, uh, my son told me one day about this church that sat on a certain corner, and he said, Ma, they're in there singing and shouting and people getting killed on the outside of the church. Mm -hmm. You think God hears that? You think he's satisfied with that? That's just your flesh. And I'm telling you people, I didn't come here to entertain you. I came to tell you what God said. And I read the scripture to you the other night in Ezekiel, um, what was it, 33, uh, where, where the word of God says that God has pulled his sword out of his sheath. And he has shined it, and he has sharpened it, and he's not going to put it back in his sheath. He said, because you refuse my rod of correction, now I'm sitting my sword of judgment. Yes. The pandemic was a rod. But the next thing to come is judgment. Absolutely. As leaders, you have a responsibility. You gotta be saying, God help me, show me. Yes. I don't know what to do. Run to somebody that know what to do. Can you help me? No, we get problem. No, I'm Pastor So and so. Mess I'm not going over there to them. Come on. i you know, come on. Uh 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 uh. I got five hundred members, they only got fifty members, and they can tell me something. What can they tell me? They listen, God doesn't give a hand fat. Come on. About your five hundred. Yes. When they can't do nothing. Come on. God is more pleased with that 50 that they're raising up to be sons. Amen. Your highest calling is to raise up Amen. sons, not to raise up membership. Absolutely. You're not going to get paid for membership. It's not even biblical. That's true. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You guys learn anything? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more thing. What you have to do is get the revelation, not only of who Jesus is, but the revelation of who you are. Right. I tell people at home sometimes, I say, you guys don't know me. You know, Apostle Hamilton, Bishop Hamilton, Mother Hamilton, Sister Winnie, but you don't know me. And when you don't know a person, it's hard to accept them. You think they're trying to be something greater than you. But that's not the point. God sends somebody in your midst to help you get to a place where you are. Amen. Not. And if you reject that person, 
you may not get another opportunity. Absolutely. So I tell people, get to know me. Get to know who I am in your midst. Not just Apostle Hamilton. Yes. That's my call. But who am I other than that? Absolutely. Sometimes things get so crazy in my life. I said, well, God, who in the world am I? I have to ask him that. What am I that I encounter this? Who am I that, that people are always coming and, 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 and pulling? And pull? who, who am I? I have no understanding. Absolutely. I have no understanding. But all I know, I am who he says I am. Amen. And I do what he tells me to do. Absolutely. That's all I know. That's all I know. Okay, so we got this power and this authority thing, right? Let's go over to um, Ephesians. Chapter number what? Chapter number four. This is one where people get it all messed up. Start reading at um, verse 9. Let, let's read verse 9 to verse 11. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Okay, now hold it. We'll read the next in a few minutes. So, this is what Jesus did. He descended into the earth, into time, okay? Then after the crucifixion, mm -hmm. he ascended, he went back to glory, and now he sits on the right hand of the Father. All right? And he's making intercession for us. But before he left, he took a portion of himself and put it in certain men and women. And we call it their calling. But the thing about it is, you already were before you became. Come on, come on. You were born that. Wow. Amen. Before you ever stepped foot on planet Earth. You were already that. But it took somebody in earth to recognize it. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. To recognize it and to introduce you to earth. And so some people call these gifts. They are not gifts. They are callings with job descriptions. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to be trained in them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you're being an apostle is not a gift. But you as an apostle are the gift. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. as the prophet are the gift. Mm -hmm. You as the pastor are the gift. Mm -hmm. You as the teacher, you as the evangelist yes. are the gift. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. He said he gave gifts unto men. He gave a portion of himself to humanity. Amen. To humanity. Not to a male gender, but to humanity. Mm -hmm. And he gave it for a certain reason. Let's look at the seven things. I want you to read this slowly. What's number one? Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. For the maturity of the saints. For the work of the ministry. So they can do the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the building of the body of Christ. Till we all come again in the unity of the faith. Until we're all in unity of faith. Until the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm. Till we all become like Jesus. Mm. Okay? Verse 14. Though we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. So that's six. You make them stabilize. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> Number seven, speaking the truth in love. 
You teach them how to speak the truth in love. Absolutely. Seven things the fivefold is supposed to be doing together. Amen. Amen. Together. Amen. Together. Together. So let's look at this. The apostle is a sent one. A sent one. Jesus was sent by the Father. Jesus uh, sent the Holy Spirit. And Jesus sent his apostles. All right. They, Jesus was the first one to call them apostles. And then in John chapter 21, it tells us that he breathed on them. Okay, when he breathed on them, they got the Holy Spirit to become sons of God because under that point, they were not sons of God. It is only sons that are given responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he breathed on them to receive the Holy Ghost. Before that, in John 14, 15, and 16, he talks about the spirit that would come. And he said, I have many things to tell you, but you're not able. You can't take it. But once they became sons, and they got filled with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. then they were able to have Rhema. Okay? The word became alive. Then we see the prophet, who is the, 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 the apostle stands in God's stead. He or she is not God, but they stand as God in the earth. The prophet is the voice of God. So some of those little sweet prophecies you got, you got to denounce them. Amen. They came by the wrong spirit. Everybody got quiet. Amen. Amen. Okay. Some evangelists. Evangelists do not just hop from church to church preaching the message. That is not a true evangelist. That is an exhorter. Yes. Or a revivalist. We read about the revivalists. We read about uh, the exhorters. They come in and encourage the church. Evangelists go to where the lost is. Yes. Mm. Wherever That's there's right. the lost, you'll find them. That's right. And, everybody say and. 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 They operate in the gifts of miracles, faith, and healing. Mm. And if you don't see those gifts in them, then they're not really evangelists. They're exhorters. Mm. All right? Amen. Uh, the, the pastor. Now, this is very interesting because pastors are never to go out and start a church. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Never. Pastors biblically were released by the apostles. Mm -hmm. In the book of Timothy and Titus, you see Paul talking to them because I believe he was under house arrest at the time, mm. and he tells them, I want you to go ordain elders. Hey. Mm. What are the elders? The elders are not little kids that have not gone through this season as some churches have. Mm. All these young people have elders. This is the elder in my church. What? Are they 30 years old? What seasons have they gone through? My God. Come on. Mm. Amen. They haven't gone through no seasons. Mm. They haven't suffered nothing. Mm. Come on. They have not suffered squat. Mm -hmm. And they Ouch. can't suffer. They can't even take somebody talking about us. Mm. And you're talking about they're an elder. You lied. Ah. And you lied to them. Mm. My God. My God. It said season. Mm. Ordained season. Mm. People to be elders. Mm. Hallelujah. Man, we're a mess, aren't we? Yes. Season people. Mm. And then what did he do? He set them over churches because the church was growing so quickly. Mm. And that the, the church began to grow excessively fast. So he would set them over several churches and he called them bishops. Mm. 
Mm. Now, bishop is not a calling. Come on. Bishop is an appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were appointed by the apostles mm. to make sure that the word stayed pure. Mm. That was their job. Mm. They're called the Episcopos. The Episcopos means that it is the work that the senior elder does. Mm -hmm. So the bishop is a senior elder that was given authority. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what did, what did the apostles do? They appointed elders over the churches. That's right. Mm -hmm. But somebody get mad. Uh, you're at Pastor Althea's church. She don't let you do your little thing. And you get mad and say, God told you to go on down to Pastor D's church. Huh? Hope oh, she gonna let you do your little thing. <laughs> and neither one of them let you do your little thing. So you said, the next time I go in a church, it's going to be my own church. So you step out. And you get some people just like yourself. My God. To be your members. Come on. My God. And he said, this is the most disobedient group ever. They just like you. Yeah. yeah. You birth after your own kind. That's right. That's right. Are you all hearing this? Yes. yes. So, it, even, see what happens, what pastors overlook, like even amidst them, if you have somebody that you placed over your cell groups, those people evidently have a pastor's heart. Or you would not have I hope they have a pastor's heart. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise they should not be assigned to them. That's mm. right. Okay? Mm. And so if you are that person and you've gone out, number one, let's get everybody look at me. Mm. Number one, you never start a church. Absolutely. Whatever ministry you have, you birth it. Mm -hmm. You go through the birthing pains. And so if you've gone out and you've started something mm, mm. and you're out there on your own, My God. you're in trouble. Absolutely. You need to ask God to direct you yes. to proper authority. Absolutely. Because you certainly can't be authority. Absolutely. Without being under authority. Absolutely. Yes. Well, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Amen. You guys get this? Amen. Amen. We're going to have order, right? Amen. We're going to have order. Mm -hmm. Jesus asked the question. He said, will I find faith when I come back? What is he talking about? Will I find that that looks like me? Mm. And that's doing what I do. Praise in God. The earth? Praise God. If he would come now, he would be ashamed of us. Mighty God. Because we don't look like him. Mm. We don't talk like him. We don't smell like him. Because he has an aroma. You know. He's got a sweet fragrance. Come on. And we say we're leaders. Mighty God. But we don't want nobody to tell us anything. And God forbid if the pastor tells you something. If the pastor gets up and he preaches the same message for two or three Sundays. Oh! The pastor's telling all my business. It just keeps talking to me over the pulpit. Well, the pastor didn't know what in the ham fat your business was. <laughs> Come on. And, and if the message was preached the first time and you didn't get it, then it had to come the second time. Yeah. That's and right. And if you didn't get it the second time, then it had to come the third time. Right. Until you get it. Because oh God, God is trying to get your attention. Come on. And the devil, oh, they're just talking about me. Pastor's always talking about me. Then you're ready to leave because you think the pastor's talking about you. Well, no matter where you go, <laughs> if you've got that same problem, God's going to deal right. with somebody. So, we're talking about true leadership. True people of God. People who really love God. People who really want God. 
People will say, for God I live and for God I die. Amen. I said to the Lord, you know, that they have all these killings in Cleveland. God, don't just let some fool come and kill me. But if I have to die, let it be for the sake of the gospel. Amen. You don't mind dying for purpose. Yes. But not because some idiot just came and did it. <laughs> God is telling us to change. Amen. We've got to change. Absolutely. Now, one more thing. Everybody say one more thing. One, one more thing. thing. Your praise team. Most of you need to set them down. Yes. Set them down. Somebody say why? Why? Because they're not after God's heart. Mm -hmm. yes. They sound good. They sound good. But they're not after the heart of God. They're after the acclamation that you give them My for God. what they do. Mm. You gotta discern that. You gotta discern that. Some people worship worship. Ah, uh, my my Some my. People worship praise. Mm. Huh? My God. So your praise and worship team should be people who are after the heart of God. That's right. Absolutely. Who want God? Because if the praise and worship team uh, uh, is in that position, they plow the hearts of the people yes. before you preach. That's right. Yes. And if they're really into God, you won't have to preach. That's right. And I don't mean just missing one or two times. You won't hardly ever have to. Because they plowed. And you just got to plant a seed. Mm -hmm. So if they're just in there for the sound of music, because they sound good, mm -hmm. and you keep affirming that they sound good, yeah. huh? My God. You're just there to get the pack or the pat on the back. Because you know what? Everybody say what? What? They've never been affirmed by anybody. My God. Mm -hmm. They were never affirmed by their parents mm -hmm. or anybody. Mm -hmm. So you're the one that affirms them. Mm -hmm. And so you keep them in that position. You keep them in that position. You keep them the same way. Because we got to have praise and worship. We got to have the. No, no, no. You don't have to have anything that does not represent God. Get them good and saved. Yeah. Teach them how to fall in love with God. Amen. You'll be able to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. And people get saved doing praise and worship. Hallelujah. When you get it right. Mm -hmm. I love that last song you were playing. Mm -hmm. that, I want that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how you do that one. She couldn't keep one. <laughs> Are you understanding this? Mm -hmm. Don't have your praise team get up trying to sing to God and they have not had a prayer of repentance. Absolutely. They've got to wash before praise. Absolutely. Otherwise, God is not accepting that mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's called mess to him. Read Malachi chapter 1. He said, give it to your, offer to your governor. Will he accept it? <laughs> Come on. wash. Mm -hmm. The priest of the Old Testament had to wash, change his garments mm -hmm. before he could offer the sacrifice. Right. You're offering the sacrifice of praise. You're offering the sacrifice of yourself. So clean up. That's right. Father, forgive me. Yeah. Amen. Give me permission to come into your presence. Absolutely. So he holds out the scepter. Oh, yes. And you can come into his presence. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. And when you get there, mm. oh, my God. Praise it's God. It's so awesome. Hey. Now you say, well, this is... This, well, you know, we have praise and worship, and, and God, God, you know, God just always does things. God does something really good. In that. Do you understand that he didn't accept the praise and worship? He honored the faith of the person. Mm -hmm. Wow. God honors faith. Yes. He didn't accept the praise and worship. But he honored the faith of the person. Mm. Oh, y'all got quiet just there. Yes. Mm. 
You got quiet just then. But it's a fact. The Lord was talking to me about this on my way uh, 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 from the hotel this morning. You know, he said, let them know. I don't honor the, the praise and worship they do. But I have to honor the faith. Amen. That's why you see the miracles. Praise God. That's why you see things happen. Praise God. Now, because you accept it, mm. you're contaminated mm. praise and worship. Mm. But because he honored the faith. Amen. Any questions? 